I'm DJ TLM, and this is Share the Knowledge. Today's podcast is brought to you by Banzoogle. But now let's get into the first question, and this is all about song selection. I got into a discussion with another DJ, and he believes that the ratio is three songs for the crowd, one for him. I understand what he's saying, but the venues I play kind of cater to what I want to play. Sometimes I feel like playing obvious choices that I'm not really into takes away from why I do this. Now, I totally understand that. So I understand the job of a DJ is to get people dancing and play songs they recognize and react to, but I would be miserable always playing Sandstorm, Staying Alive, and I know people go crazy for it, but I don't care about that. My passion is DJing and it's being a skilled DJ and finding rare grooves and break beats while introducing the crowd to music they might not have heard. It's more challenging route and it opens the door for bad nights, but so far everything's been positive. Sorry for the insane long post, uh, and I guess uh, to summarize, as a DJ, what is the correct ratio for music you're passionate about versus what the crowd recognizes? There's no ratio. That's my answer, there is no ratio. Uh, I totally understand where you're coming from, and basically for me, at the current time, that is probably my biggest dilemma when it comes to being a DJ, because I'm not that into a lot of the current uh, songs over here, the current genres that are popping. I like certain songs out of every genre, but the ones that are being played the most, I'm only feeling it half, and that does not give me the feeling I want to have when I'm playing. When I'm playing, I'm there to rock the crowd, but I don't want to play stuff that I don't really feel. That's not why I got into this. So I totally understand where you're coming from, and that's where people have to make their own choices. For some, it's gonna be, I don't care what I play as long as I play and get paid. That's fine too. You have to do what you do and follow your own heart, passion, um, or whatever your motivation is. For me personally, the choice was another, but that does mean that I will have less gigs to do. And most of the gigs that I'm passionate about currently are more of the old school throwback type of parties where they want me to play like 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. Now, don't get, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. It's not like I don't like new music. There's plenty of new music that I like, but somehow all of the songs that I like are either not the hits or only a couple of the hits and the rest of the hits are songs that I really don't care about that much. So you have to make that choice. But when it comes to playing, uh, accepting a gig, I'll accept gigs where I get to play what I like to play. That's what I always did. I was into hip hop, R&B, soul, funk, you name it, but I was playing at parties that were catering to those genres. So I got to play music that I like. So it was never really an issue for me. Now the thing was, people do like to hear the hits and you can get tired of playing the same old row of hits if you got a lot of gigs. And I've had that where you're playing like two, three sets a night. It gets boring and you don't want to just play that. And I never did that. I always made sure that I added something of myself to it, but do it in a smart way. That's why I say there's no ratio. Sometimes you can tell that you're going to have to give the crowd a little bit more of the familiar stuff to really get them going. So you can't just say, all right, it's going to be three for them, one for me. I don't see that happening. That's gonna work at a certain party. It's not gonna work at another party. That's why you always have to read the crowd, see what type of vibe they got going on. And sometimes you'll have a party where it's like, from the beginning, you can tell, I can do anything at this party. I can play anything. This crowd is with me. We're gonna have an amazing time. And sometimes you can tell like, okay, this is a crowd that really does not know anything besides the popular tracks. That's the way they've been schooled by their local DJs, unfortunately. So if I want to, like you say, educate and play some stuff they don't know, you're gonna have to do it very carefully because you definitely wanna keep that crowd rocked as well. You wanna make sure that they're having a good time. They didn't come to get educated, they came to have fun. So you're gonna have to slip that knowledge in there, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, that's basically my answer. There's no ratio you're going to have to find. That's going to depend on the gigs that you do. But like you said, you're playing a lot of gigs that really cater to the style that you like. That's what I prefer to do as well. Accept gigs where I know that I can play what I like to play and that the crowd is going to like that as well. To me, that's the best solution. 
Bazooka makes it easy to build a stunning website for your music in minutes. You can choose from hundreds of mobile friendly themes and then customize your design and content in a few clicks with Bazooka's easy visual editor. Now, all the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including tools to sell your music and merch commission free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, and integration to pull in content from all your online services, including Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. I use Bazooka to create the Share the Knowledge podcast website and that was very easy. Bazooka plans start at just $8.29 a month and include your own free custom domain name. Now, if you want to try it out for free for 30 days, click on the link in the description box down below and be sure to use the promo code SHARE to get 15% off the first year of your subscription.